Island chains, such as the rocky cliffs and expansive beaches of the British Virgin Islands, are some of the most unique ecosystems on the planet. We quickly realized that these habitats were unlike anything we've ever explored before, and this realization was particularly evident in the abundance of unique reptilian life that calls these islands home. In the last episode, we looked at some of the more common, plentiful species that inhabit the British Virgin Islands, such as anoles, amoebas, and snakes. However, during our adventures we also came across a number of rarer species that we managed to get on film. Some species were so rare, in fact, that we only encounter them once throughout the whole trip. Get ready to meet some incredible island species that you may have never seen before, because these are the rare reptiles of the British Virgin Islands. Like many of the reptile species we've shown you guys so far, Puerto Rican eye spot sparrows hail originally from Puerto Rico, but have made their way to the British Virgin Islands and other surrounding Caribbean countries over time. These guys have a very distinct coloration and patterning that makes them easy to distinguish from other dwarf gecko species, and perhaps their most recognizable feature is the pair of white dots just behind their head, from which they get their name. Sparrows are mostly ground-dwelling lizards, but have also been observed climbing trees in search of food, which for a gecko this small would be small insects like ants or larvae. Now this is a diurnal species, though ironically we came across this individual while out night harping. The eye spot sparrow is a very rare species to come across in the wild, and because of this we don't know all that much about them. Right now they haven't even been classified yet by the IUCN, this was the only encounter we actually had with these cute little guys on the trip, which made it even more awesome to come across one in the wild. When exploring in tropical seas, there is always a chance of encountering one of the ocean's most iconic residents, sea turtles. Green sea turtles, like this juvenile here, are the most common in the British Virgin Islands, and we were very lucky to catch this little guy feeding around our boat. Green sea turtles are primarily herbivorous as adults, feeding on seaweed and marine grasses mostly, while the juveniles will take small invertebrates to supplement their diets. They travel vast distances in search of food in optimal climates, regularly swimming hundreds of miles from one foraging ground to another. These guys can live for an estimated 50 to 60 years on average, but there is speculation that they can grow to be much older than that. Getting to film a sea turtle swimming only a few feet away from us was an incredible experience, as we truly got to appreciate the grace and control that these creatures possess in the water. This guy hung out with us for almost three minutes before disappearing back into the sea, and as he swam out of view, we were grateful to have spent time with such a rarely seen reptile. The next leg of our journey was perhaps the most special to us, as we got to work closely with one of the most endangered species in the world. Take a look. All right guys, so we are here at the Anagata Rock Iguana Head Start Facility here on the island of Anagata. Now the Anagata Rock Iguana is actually one of the most endangered iguana species in the entire world. It's thought that there are less than 200 left in the wild. Now let's take a look at this little guy here. We actually have a little baby in one of these cages. He's on the ceiling there, check that out. Now this species is actually being head started here at the facility so they can eventually be released back into the wild. Now these iguanas were once distributed throughout much of the West Indies, but now their populations have dwindled so low that they're only found here on the island of Anagata. Now let's check out this little guy, he's just a juvenile. Now in the wild, these guys are going to be hanging out in the inland scrub forests of Anagata and a lot of the rocky outcrops where they do most of their hunting. Now they're primarily herbivorous, they'll be eating fruits and flowers and stuff like that, but they are also opportunistic carnivores, so they'll be eating little cockroaches and beetles if they can find them, so they're truly omnivorous. Now this facility is absolutely vital for the continuation of this iguana species. Because their habitat is under such pressure from feral animals and the movements of humans, this area allows them to actually grow up and start their juvenile stage with a lot of help from the volunteers. So these guys are fed, they're protected from predators, and you can see these big cages over here. Now this is actually where they keep the juveniles. And these cages allow the young iguanas to grow up in a protected environment 
without being threatened by feral cats or struggling against human encroachment in their habitat. The Rock Iguana Head Start facility is doing great work and they're actually making excellent progress in the rehabilitation of this species. But unfortunately, these guys still face extreme environmental pressures, both from humans moving further into the island and destroying their habitat, and also from the feral populations of goats, sheep, and cows that are competing with these guys for food. So is that the damage that the feral animals are causing, is taking away their food resources? Absolutely. So the cows and the goats and everything are eating a lot of the plants that these guys depend on to survive, and it's hard for a species this rare to compete with exponential breeders like goats and sheep. The Anagata rock iguana's situation is dire, with an increasing amount of damage befalling their populations and habitat every year. This is why the Head Start facility, the only one of its kind in the British Virgin Islands, is such a vital resource for this species. It was a dream come true for us to get to work with these critically endangered iguanas and bring them to our platform. And it is our hope that by showing all of you these incredible animals, we can inspire people to help save them from extinction. Many people don't even know that this species exists, but there are actually ways that we can help support them. Organizations, such as the International Iguana Foundation, are working to protect the Anagata rock iguana, and any donations to their cause allow them to expand their research programs and dedicate more land to iguana preservation. If you would like to get involved with this foundation, we have provided a link to their website in the description. And as always guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like, and comment down below telling us if you enjoyed seeing these rare reptiles up close. We have many more episodes still to come, so subscribe now so you don't miss any of our Caribbean content coming out very soon.